Hi, I'm Harriet, and I'm the founder of Mallow and Marsh, and I'm looking for £65,000 in return for 10%. Mallow and Marsh is a gourmet marshmallow company. We make handmade, 100% natural marshmallows with no additives and no preservatives. These are designed for the marshmallow lover as a grab-and-go style sort of impulse purchase. We have five flavours now. We've got roasted coconut, raspberry, vanilla, peppermint and dark chocolate, and cappuccino. Last week, we actually launched into 40 local stores of a national supermarket as part of a 12-month contract that we're looking to roll out. Would you like to try some? <laughs> Love to try some. <laughs> A short but sweet pitch from Harriet Playdell Bouvier. Roasted coconut cappuccino. Who's seeking £65,000 in return for a 10% share of her business. But will Harriet's product be to the taste of design guru Kelly Hoppen? The thing is, I'm crazy about marshmallows, and I have a big jar in my kitchen, and I go and buy the packets of the white and the pink. I take the pink out because I only like the white. It's rather sad, I know. But these taste a bit stale. But I don't know if it's because a normal marshmallow is so soft. These are much closer to the nougat side of things. It is a marshmallow in terms of the recipe and the design, but it is very different. Well, it's, this, is, this is funny because um, I literally, not a week ago, was having a conversation about marshmallow, but you know, there always becomes the latest thing that everybody gets into. Uh, and I, you know, a, I love them, but I've started to see them about. Uh, but why marshmallows? I've lived and breathed marshmallows for a very long time. It really was kind of a right time, right place moment. Good time. Um, I think maybe obviously my research of seeing that it was growing probably helped. I, I go anywhere and I give them out and I've always got marshmallows on me and it's just so much fun seeing the reactions. So what, what do they, what does, for instance, that pack sell for? The little, little one? ones are £2.50. And what do they cost for you, for you so, to make? I'm, from a cost perspective, obviously, it's very sensitive because I've got, I've got the contract that's there. I can tell you that I sell them from between £1.20 and about £1.43, and I make between uh, 22 and 43% margin on that. Well, anybody but. can work out, so you, except that it'd be much easier if you just tell me. What do they cost to make? 83p. I don't know if you guys want to see the packets. Mm, I'd love can, to. Yeah, but you see one of the packets, please, hurry up. Harriet's gourmet marshmallows don't come cheap. But Duncan Bannatyne is quick to seize on one area where costs could be reduced. The trouble with this is it's overpackaged, and that makes it so expensive. I, I'm fully aware that it is something that needs addressing. One of the reasons for it at the beginning is it helps my shelf life, which has got me into the supermarkets. Mine have a six-month shelf life. Um, most of them come in at the kind of four months if they're really working on it. I mean, it's only a positive if the cost price comes down. What does your business plan look like? So, year one, I'm looking to turn over 220,000 with a 17,000 pound loss. Uh, year two is 560 um, with a 80,000 pound profit. And year three is 650,000 for uh, with 100%, uh, 100,000, sorry, profit. That's a lot of marshmallows. A lot of marshmallows. Mm -hmm. um, Have you factored in the craze factor? There is a bit of a craze being talked about at the moment. We've got some innovation in terms of new products. So I'm in the middle of developing a spreadable version at the moment. It is early stage. Um, but if everything goes to plan with that, that would be ready to launch by the end of the year. For now, I'm a marshmallow brand, and that's what I'm focusing on to get everything else off the ground. I think you've done a really good job. I love the product, by the way. I think it tastes absolutely delicious. Um, the thing that really strikes me, as, as good as the pitch is, I do think that you've, you've incredibly overvalued your business. You're predicting in three years 100k profit, which would value your business around six or seven times earnings, which I think is right, but you're offering me today a price to invest in you, but you're giving me the rate that you would be of where you see it could end up. So that's with, that, well, that's with zero money. So if someone wants to bring in the money, I can see this turning over much closer to sort of 1.3 in about So do you want to give me the figures years. if you receive £65,000, what you're going to deliver years one, two and three? I 
I don't think I know them. A gap in Harriet's financial projections has been exposed, marring her so far faultless pitch. Will it deter Deborah Meaden from making her an offer? I see many opportunities in the marshmallow market and in this premium end of it. But you are well overvalued. But you're good. So, I'm going to offer you all of the money. But I want 33 and a third. I want a third of the business to, to make sure that I'm engaged enough to work for you. Thank you. An early offer has given the other dragons food for thought. To Kelly Hoppen, Piers Linney, or Duncan Bannatyne think there's money to be made in marshmallows. I think this, this could be, this could do very well. But you have an investment from a dragon who already knows a little bit about this industry. I don't think I could improve it much. So for that reason, that reason only, I'm out. I think you're very sensible, very credible. I just don't get the valuation of £650,000. Um, so best of luck with it, but I'm out. I think one of the, the, the biggest issues you've got is that as much as I think the product is great, I thought it tasted a bit more like nougat, which is kind of strange to me that you've gone down the marshmallow route when it's actually more like something else. I'm not going to make you an offer. Um, so I'm afraid I'm out. Only Peter Jones is yet to declare his position. With an impressive track record of taking new products and turning them into supermarket staples, will he see merit in adding Mallow and Marsh to his investment portfolio? Harry, I, I do think that you're going to need a little bit more money. So, I'm going to make you a higher offer. I'm going to, I'm going to offer you £80,000, not the 65 you've asked for. But for that, I want 40%. I really do believe in the product and I really do believe in the valuation. 40% um, is too high for what I believe my business to be worth. Levi Roots retained 60% of his business. He's now clearly a multi-millionaire. Sometimes it's not always about the percentage that you have, it's about the partner that you get. You're not prepared to shift on the equity no, side? No, because I think you're going to end up needing more money. And what I won't be doing is when you do need more money, saying to you, I want another 20%. I would say probably 90% of the investments that I'm still invested in have had more cash from me, substantial sums of cash for me, to develop the business. Is there anything that you would be able to shift on in terms of your percentage? What would you propose? Um, I would be... I would be open to looking at 15%. I will provide the expertise, and that's why I need, I need enough in it to make that worth my while. I have um, the money available to me from an investor uh, for roughly the 10% valuation. Um, and I came here today because I genuinely think that you guys could bring more, a lot more. 
the table because I think that is a check effectively. Um, but I do also believe in myself. I respect your clarity, but we are so far apart that I think it certainly knocks my deal out of the window, which is, I think, a shame, but I understand. I, I think you've eaten too many Marshall and and the sugar's gone to your brain. You, you've got to make it worth, worth the while to get involved, and 15%, it's, it's high risk. Yeah, no, I totally understand. So I'm going to wish you well on your way, but I'm not going to invest, and I'm going to say I'm out. Thank you. So, despite offers from two dragons, with the commercial clout to supercharge her push to market, Harriet decided to go it alone. A third of her business was ultimately too high a price to pay to secure an investment. In some ways, I'm gutted, because I would have loved to have worked with either of them, and I think it could have been such a ride, but I just, I do believe it would have undervalued the business. It's either going to be the biggest mistake I've ever made or it's going to be one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, that tends to be the way with every single decision I make.